<laughs> hey, listen, I'm challenging everybody out here for a match. Anybody who wants more. No, I Give just got out of surgery. <laughs> <laughs> Come listen to that mask guy. You know how many times he's got my ass kicked? I'm start now. <laughs> no, I don't wrestle no more, you know, but uh, I had one hell of a career. And you know, I love to watch that video right there. I can watch it over and over. You know, because you know why I like that video yeah. so much? Because I'm kicking the shit out of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> you don't think I'd show you? I'm not trying to get my ass hanging to me, do you? <laughs> no way, buddy. That would happen. But you've seen some of those matches, and you've seen the end of them. Yeah, you see where I got it. Like I always say, folks, I wasn't born with a face like this. I used to be a handsome fella until I got to pro wrestling. <laughs> but you know, I love that. I love this. See this picture out here on the screen right now? Take a look at that. Look at those eyes right there, man. I was in pants, okay? I'm telling you, people see that, they go, man, rapper. You know, like you're ready to kill somebody, man. You know when that picture, I'll tell you the truth, when that picture was taken, I was standing in the ring like this, and I watched Andre the Giant step on the top rope. I wasn't intense, I was fierce jealous. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out where the hell I'm gonna run away. Oh, I mean, suck. seven foot four, 520 pounds, check the phones and look it up, I'm telling you. He was awesome, okay? Andre the Giant, you know, and uh, another picture I like a lot, if I can get RJ to show you back there, is this one right here. Man. You see this picture? Brother, I was running and gunning right there. I was in my prime, okay? I was doing it right. Actually, folks, I'll tell you what. What I was doing right here in this picture, if you take a look, Okay, I was doing my Hulk Hogan impersonation. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah, I was drinking my milk, saying my prayers, and taking my vitamins. And I was taking some heavy ass vitamins back then. <laughs> That's right, brother. But you know, every time I see this picture, it reminds me the fans used to come up to me, they see me like this, and they go, hey, let me in there, two questions for me. They say, why do, you, why do you wear a mask and why do you call yourself the rapper? And I'll tell you right now, it's as simple as this. Because when I was a young man, I was so damn good looking that I'd go to the ring and those damn women would be hanging on me, trying to get an autograph, trying to get a kiss, trying to get a hug. I'd get in the ring, it'd be a full-fledged riot, man. The security <laughs> would have their hands full, dragging those women off the ring apron. And the girls in the front row the girls sometimes would take their bra off and throw them in the ring. Sometimes they'd take their panties off and throw them in the ring. I'm telling you, I made all that bullshit up. <laughs> that never really happened. Oh, man. Oh, I wish it would have been never did. The truth is this right here. I can do all the drop kicks and the leap frogs and all the monkey flips and all the moves. I can talk my ass off on the mic, as you can tell. Okay, and I can do the chain matches, the Bob Wire Fence matches, the cage matches, the TLC matches, and that's not tender loving care, it's <laughs> tables, ladders, and chairs. You go through every one of them before the match is over, believe me. Okay. <laughs> But I have one problem, I had this plain face. I mean, I wasn't ugly enough to scare nobody, and I wasn't good looking enough to bring women in. But if you give these promoters a chance, if you put ratings on TV, and you put asses out there in their seats, they're gonna figure out a way to make yourself some money and you do a little bit. <laughs> and so, they put those boots on me, they put those tights on me, gave me a championship belt, I hit that gym, I got tanned up, and they put that mask on my face to give me a character so I can scare people and they call me the grappler and my career took off from there, thank the good Lord. Amen. Thank you very much, that's the gospel. But you know, it didn't start like that. If you take a look, here's a picture of me when I first started. That's, great, nice. that's me and my dad and my mom, okay? Hell, my mom's bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> I was 5'10", 189 pounds. And the first place I went to wrestle after I survived training was in Amarillo, Texas for the Fox. 
you know, he didn't have the eating problem. He had some kind of growth disorder, but he was a, he was a hell of a guy. So we went from there. Actually, actually, he tipped the guy about 20 bucks, and he ate like one plate of food. So the Chinese guy loved him when he left. He was his best friend. Yeah. <laughs> so we go on up. We still got time to kill him. I go, you know what? Let's go to the walk-in theater. So me and Andre the Giant, we go to the walk-in theater. We get our popcorn, our coke. We're headed down the aisle. I got my date, Andre the Giant, with me. We go, we go to sit down. His ass won't fit in the seats. Oh, man. So what are we going to do? So we call the manager. He's too big. The manager goes, I got an idea. He puts a bench in the back. Sets Andre there and all the people start coming in. And we're watching this movie and the people are going like this. They're eating their popcorn and looking back at Andre. Eating their popcorn and looking back at Andre. They're watching Andre more than the other movie. It's not even unbelievable. But I loved Andre the Giant, man. And there's another guy that was a real, real close personal friend of mine. I know all you folks know him. But I want you to take a look at this right here. This is Andre the Battle Royale, his favorite match that we got tonight. Okay, coming up. Now, if you look, there's Harley Race standing the first guy on the left. Seven-time, seven-time NWA champion. Oh. The next guy with him is Dory Funk Jr., former NWA world champion. There's his brother Terry Funk, Crazy Terry. We know him, man. And there's Dick Murdoch, and there's Ted DiBiase locked up with Andre in the corner. Now, the guy who's in charge, Andre, is a dumbass grappler. I don't know what I was thinking, but I'll tell you the truth, folks. All that talent in that ring is some fantastic and great talent. But I'll tell you one thing, if you ask any of those guys right there who the real boss man was, they say, my best friend, I'm really giant, was a true boss man. Out of all of them, okay? And that's the gospel. And you know, another guy I really loved to death was one of my best friends, was this guy right here, watch this video. Oh, oh. Take it or leave it, that's all you're getting. 
if you're on a guarantee, so I said, you know what? I told him and his son, Barry, one way or the other, I'm gonna give my money back, okay? And so, what I done was, I went to Japan about three weeks later to wrestle Fujinami for the world title. And I was over there wrestling, and he, remember I told you he paid my phone bill? Oh yeah, well, you know what? I call home three times a day to my wife saying I love you, honey. I'm not staring. When I got back, the phone bill was $1,200. Yeah. <laughs> Straight from Tokyo. Well, when I got back, Don Lewis fired my ass, and you put Roddy Piper in my place as a new booker. But you know what? Roddy Piper went to Don and says, I'll take on this job for you, Don, on one condition. You make Linda the proper of my sister. And you know what? I got the same pay and the same money and the same job right back because this great guy right here, Roddy Roddy Piper. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the ring. The LCR, the Cuban Assassin. That's it. Wow. Woo! Hey, you know, Grandpa, I listen to all these stories he's saying. But he never once said, I used to whip his ass in Florida, Georgia, Dallas, Portland, Oregon, Calgary, Canada. What? <laughs> you know, I've had different characters in this uh, professional wrestling business. I'm going to tell you about one of them I had in Florida. And you got a picture, six foot two. 285 pounds dressed in white spandex from head to toe. <laughs> that was heavy. With a gold halo and I wasn't the good guy. <laughs> so I'm, I'm riding to uh, Sarasota, Florida and it's me, Jim Neidhart and uh, Fletcher Kushap and we're feuding with the Hall of Famers, the Fabulous Free Birds. And uh, I get there, and the sheriff's around the car. And I look straight over at my heart, and Kush up, and I said, uh, there's something I need to know here. And uh, they look over, and you know, the sheriff knocks on my window, I roll down the window. Sheriff, I just want you guys to know that we had a a bunch of threats here that one of you guys are going to get shot tonight. What? So I'm thinking, hmm. White spandex? Halo? I said, damn, I'm the bullseye here. <laughs> so, I get there and I tell Bill Alfonso, which went on to ECW as Fonzie, I tell uh, Fonzie, I said, hey Fonzie, we could tell 
Michael Hayes, but you know what's going on here. And see, you know, Michael Hayes, you know what he says back? He says, listen, tell the saint if the bullet hits one of us, you guys win. And if the bullet hits one of you guys, we win. I said, that is great. Well, I wouldn't be telling that story if I wouldn't be here today. So now I want to go to WCW, because I get there, and you've seen at the beginning of that tape, I'm carrying this flag with a flagpole, and little everybody knows that flagpole is actually a broomstick wrapped in white tape. So I'm feuding there, and who's my opponent? Whoa! USA! USA! And here comes Hacksaw down the aisle with a big ass 2 by 4 yeah. And I said, well that's just great. I just brought a knife to a gunfight. <laughs> well, Hacksaw took that 2 by 4 he started beating the hell out of me all around. The next day I was going around, USA, USA, USA. <laughs> and that's the way that ended. Thank you all. Crapper, thank you. Hey, thank you, folks. Thanks for listening to our story. What? Really? Come on, guys. Oh, we got a heckler here? Why don't you get up here and do some talking, huh? <laughs> yeah, I'm sure about that, huh, Chuck? Come on. <laughs> Is that one of the glow girls? <laughs> What do you have to say? What you tell everyone? Well, you know, I do respect the fact that the two of you have been in the wrestling business for a really long time. But you seem to forget that men are not the only ones who know how to wrestle. That's right. In fact, you guys aren't the only ones who's had a successful wrestling career. Let's take a look at my little place. Sure. 